Okay, one really useful application for dimensionless numbers is similitude. And this is when we relate a model system to a real system. Um, similitude means nothing more than resemblance. It's just a fancy word for a simple concept. So it just refers to one thing being similar to another thing. Um, the book defines this as when the relevant processes in a model system accurately depict the processes in the true system. And this is necessary for many designs using fluids. Fluids do not scale up well. So, for example, let's say you were designing an aircraft, and incidentally, whenever a new aircraft is designed, extensive wind tunnel work is always done on it and components of it. Uh, but anyway, say, say you're designing an aircraft, you make a little model of it, you take it into the wind tunnel, and the model is um, one-tenth the size of the true system. How fast do you run the wind? Should the, the airflow be at the same velocity of the actual airplane? Should it be one-tenth the velocity? How about the flow rate? Should the flow rate be one-tenth? What about the density of the, f the fluid? Should the density be one-tenth since the model is one-tenth the size? So there's a lot of questions here about how to deal with scaling systems. And um, similitude is how we handle this. And the big problem here is that fluids behave differently on different scales. And you can see this in bad movies when they've tried to scale up waves, like done little models and run waves into them. It's quite obvious that the wave is not a real wave. Um, and that's because things like surface tension and density and how the fluid actually moves is not the same at different scales. Okay, so to, to deal with this, the first we need to do is establish what dimensionless, value, what dimensionless variables are important to the, pro, to the process that we're looking at. So we have to find our dimensionless numbers that are most important to the situation we're modeling. And then to achieve similitude, that is to get our model to act like the real system, we just have to make sure all our pi's are equal. So it's not so much how we scale individual variables like velocity and flow rate and density. The, f the way to go about this is to make sure that the pi's are the same. So the Reynolds number has to be the same, the Froude number has to be the same, etc. So we go through each of our pi's and we make sure the pi in the model is equal to the pi in the real system. So we have our model pi's and our real pi's. And if we can keep all of those equal, then our model will behave exactly like our real system. Another thing I need to mention is in the book, in the textbook, and I think in the FE manual as well, they refer to the real system as the prototype. So prototype refers to the, a full-scale design of something that you're building. So it's at full scale. Um, whereas M refers to model. Okay, so if the pi's are the same for everything, but the length scale is different between the real system and the model, then you need you will probably need a scale for each variable. And the book uses lambda to refer to scale, and scale is typically the model value over the real value. So let's do an example. We are testing a model spillway with a scale size of 1 to 10. Um, you measure a velocity in the model at a certain cross-sectional area. What velocity and flow rate will you expect in the real spillway? And for this, we're just going to assume Froude similitude. The Froude number is the velocity over the square root of gravity times some representative length. And it's the, re the ratio of inertial forces to gravity forces. And this is a really important dimensionless number. Anytime you have open channel flow or a fluid where the water surface is, can be established by, the, um, by gravity itself. So anything with waves or with an open channel or, or with a surface. So 
to get this to work, we just need Froude similitude. So the Froude number in the model has to be equal to the Froude number in the real system. I'm looking for velocity in the real system, so I'm going to solve for that. Now I think I've got everything I need to plug into that. Gravity obviously is going to be the same in the model as in the real system, so that drops out. Our length over model length is equal to 10. That's the inverse of the scale. So our velocity in the real system we can expect to be 15.8 feet per second. So this is kind of strange, right? The model's a tenth smaller than the real system, but the velocity in the model system is almost three times smaller than in the real system. So as you can see, the different variables scale differently when you're working with fluids. Now to determine flow rate, it's a little more complicated. Um, we have to do velocity times area. Flow rate's not in the fruit number. But we can use our velocity, so let's just scale up the area. And since area is a length squared, we have to do um, the length scale squared. So area in the real system is going to be the area in the um, model system times that scale squared. So the area becomes 32.4 feet squared. And then the flow rate is just the area times the velocity. We get 512 cubic feet. Let's do one other example. Let's say we've got flow of some toxic fluid down a pipe, and we want to model it with um, another fluid so we're not exposed to the toxic fluid. So we're going to use the same pipe diameter. There are different properties for each fluid. Um, we have a velocity in the real system, and we measure a pressure drop in the model system. What is the pressure drop we would expect in the real system? And we're going to use these pi values for similitude. So I'm looking for delta p, so it would make sense that I want to start with that pi value. Invoke similitude, so they have to be equal in the model system and the real system. And now I'm going to solve for delta p in the real system. And now I can just solve, right? I've measured delta p in the model. I've got the two densities. But wait a minute, I don't have both velocities. I only have velocity in the real system. So I don't have enough information to solve this because I don't, didn't measure the velocity in the model. So now we can go, but what we can do is go to another one of our pies and work with that one. So let's look at this other pie, this Reynolds number, and see if we can find Vm. So we invoke similitude, we solve for velocity in the model system. I think we have everything else we need here. We have the velocity in the real system, we've got the densities and the viscosities, and we've got the diameters, which have to be equal, so they cancel out. So now I can solve for velocity, what the velocity was in the model, and then I can use that to solve for what the pressure drop would be in the real system. So that was the point I wanted to make with this example, that sometimes you need to use multiple pies to get to your, to arrive at an answer.